But right now, it's a match from the very top of the Tedley Super League. The Bradford Bulls take on Hull. Bradford are top, Hull are third. And the Bulls boast the only 100% home record in the business. But they were beaten at Wigan last Friday by 30 points to 44. Hull haven't beaten Bradford away from home in seven years, but have already beaten Leeds at Headingley for the first time in a decade, won at Salford for the first time since 94, beaten Halifax for the first time since 91, and their win over St Helens last week was their first since December 1993. They're breaking new ground, our Sean McRae's men. They'll have to go some to beat this lot. With us is the fullback, Vicona, Naylor, Mackay and McAvoy. Henry Paul is the captain on the field with brother Robbie on the bench and Paul Deacon takes over from him at scrum half. In the forwards, Fanganar, Lowe's, McDermott, Peacock and Gilmore gets a start in the pack for the first time in Bradford's colours and Mike Forshaw returns from injury. And look at the power on the bench. Robbie Paul, Anderson, Rigon and Fielden. The coach is Brian Noble. Hull, one or two injuries to patch up. No Steve Prescott, so fullback is Matt Crowther. Three quarters, Chris Smith, Bird, Campbell and Paul Parker comes in because uh, Gareth Rayner is rested. Richard Horn and Tony Smith are the halfback combination. The forwards, Craven, Grimaldi, the captain, will start at Hooker and Felsch. Ma returns from injury to prop the defence up. Logan and Jason Smith is the loose forward. And on the bench, Maiden, Broadbent, Paul Cook and Carvel. The coach is Sean McRae. So Tony Grimaldi leads his men out to face the wrath of Bradford and the cage. Their last victory over the Bulls, April 1994. That was in the city of Bradford. 32 points to 30 at Odsall. And a certain Gerald Cordell, he ran in four tries that night, but Bradford's hopes were dented of the old first division title. Wigan won it a couple of weeks later. It's a big ask of Hull. Mind you, as I've said, they have broken some new ground already this year. Sean McRae takes his place in the stand here at Valley Parade and awaits the arrival of the Bulls. James Lowe's with a big smile on his face. Henry Paul is the captain on the field. They drew with Hull at the Boulevard a week ahead of that Challenge Cup final, 24-all. They led 24-12 with 15 minutes to go. Grimaldi with a try. Tony Smith with a try. And two conversions from Matt Crowther tied it all up at 24-all. Last year, Bradford won 56-6 at Odsall. They again drew at the Boulevard, but then they lost the second meeting at Hull in September, 25 points to 12. The doors are open, the balls are out, the cage is filling up rapidly. It's a fabulous atmosphere, and the match referee yeah, yeah, is Ian not. Smith. Oh, Plenty of tension out there, and Hull realise that they must get off to a good start. Yeah, it has been a problem for them, especially when they're on the travel, on the road, and Bradford know that too. Brian Noble, the coach, looking for a vast improvement from last week and the defeat against Wigan. Ian Smith, who took control of the Scotland-France International in midweek, he blows the whistle, Matt Crowther gets us underway, Michael Withers picks up, Brian McDermott will take the first tackle, we're underway here at Valley Parade. Lowe's at dummy half, tips the ball inside and it's Joe Vanganar, good defence on show here early from Hull and I'm sure that that will have been the message that Sean McRae got out to his men before this match. Peacock takes the third tackle of the match. Lowe's to Henry Paul. Here goes Vanganar again. Bird took him low. Grimaldi came in over the top. And also there was Scott Logan. Good switch of play there from Bradford. Little bit of a shimmy and a dummy from James Lowe's. Brought the ball back on the blind side. Well, they're deep inside Hull territory on the last. And Henry Paul hoists the bomb. Here's a tester for Matt Crowther. Oh, and he took it well. Even though Graham McKay was steaming down on him. 
Mark, they both went for it, Mackay couldn't believe that he didn't have it, good take from Matt Crowther, in fact the full back Crowther and the two wingers Chris Smith and Paul Parker, they can expect a busy night tonight, Brian Noble knows that they're a little bit shaky underneath the high ball. Well now it's Hull's turn to try and get over that advantage line, they're still just about 15 metres away from their own line and Jason Smith with a big hoofing kick downfield and it's a terrific kick too, not a 40-20 but it really does relieve the pressure just had it absolutely right, just bounced this in the field of play beautiful kick from the loose forward Jason Smith good tactics there from Hull kicking early in the tackle count, they know that uh, this Bradford side once they get a roll on they're pretty difficult to stop and a good kicking game from this fella tonight will ensure that. He'll be happy, Sean McRae. Well, he spent a lot of time out on the field before the match started, Sean McRae. And he has noticed that it is one of the shortest fields in the Super League, this. And he actually told me that uh, Bradford, they would no doubt use the 40-20 ploy, but there was no reason why his whole side shouldn't do exactly the same. And a notice of intent there from Jason Smith, I think. This is Naylor now for the Bulls, almost to the halfway line. Loads. Henry Paul, the direction of the attack switches. Van der Aert to Vicona. And Chris Smith does well. No, it wasn't Chris Smith, my apologies. It was Paul Parker. Good work from Parker there. He made sure that the big fella went on the outside. Wasn't going to be taken with the step. But again, we see Bradford do the switch back to the short side. This is Henry Paul. There's another little dink over the top this time. It's a test of four, Chris Smith. Mackay is there, and Smith does really well. It was risky, but it came off. More than risky, down sight dangerous. Deary me. That was a big risk there from uh, Chris Smith. Got away with it in the end. Richard Horn is the man in at dummy half this time. Logan Campbell plays the ball to Tony Grimaldi. The drive on field, a big hit there from James Lowe's the dab through this time by Tony Smith has turned Bradford around again Nathan McAvoy collects it behind his own try line but he lost that he lost that to McAvoy that's a wonderful chase from Hull kicked is only as good as that chase they put him under pressure and it was Horn that finally made the contact with that fella Nathan McAvoy McAvoy will be looking for a big game got off to a poor start what a mistake. If Hull can get a try here, it really will put the Catamounts to pigeons. McAvoy's first start of the year against uh, Wakefield in the last home game. This, though, is Hull in possession with youngster Richard Horn. Gets to his feet and it's with Dion Bird. And Hull look like they fancy their chances here. Horn. A big army of support behind the posts that they are attacking now. And the belief on Humberside is growing that Hull will be a major force in the game again. Grimaldi, five metres short. Tony Smith, good ball to Crowder. All wrapped up though by Paul Deacon and Graham Mackay. But he still manages to make a couple more metres towards the line. Grimaldi again. Here comes Hall. The charging run from Faust. Halted by Mike Forshaw. Last tackle here for Hull. It's with Jason Smith, the architect. Smith! He's so close. Has he lost it in the end? This will be play on, but is there any advantage? Oh, he's taking the gamble. And there's no advantage. Well, the referee went a long time there. And Vicona took a huge gamble. He wasn't aware that the referee was going to go through to it. You can see Jason Smith losing it. He was pretty short of it. But this is classified as no advantage. It was exciting. It was forward. And he's lucky to get away with it. Clear. Well, I wonder why Ian Smith didn't take the option of handing that on to the video referee just to check. Well, because allowed, Jason Smith... Well, he allowed the advantage. It was a definite knock-on here from Smith. See him try to reach over and lose his oh, position. It then, yeah. But wasn't it Naylor that knocked it out of his grasp? Not according to the official. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what on earth are Bradford doing? They're going through the wobbles at the moment, and Mackay's got the short side. He did well to tip that ball back in field, McAvoy, and he keeps it going. Here's Gilmore. Gilmore thought about releasing as he took the tackle from Luke Fels. It's back to zero on the tackle cap. Well, we know it's tense out there and nerves are tingling. But that's not an excuse for Bradford to pay panic football.
football, and that's what they've done, but they've got themselves in a good attacking position. What a start to this match from Hull and Bradford on the back foot and looking to respond. Henry Ball, long ball to Paul Deacon, raking pass, and he then finds Peacock. And Peacock tries to go in between two. Smith and Burton, he's lost it. Yeah, but he went back with Clown. Well, and Dale is having a right old go at the touch sheds, but the flag waver has got it spot on. Well, Dale and the Bulls fans are claiming this was reefed out. It was reefed out. No, he lost it, sorry. <laughs> Make your mind up, Steve. No, no, he lost it. Peacock tried to pass it, which he did. And then when the whole man gone to it, it was Bird, I think. He dragged the ball backwards towards his own sticks. Good play by the touch shots there. Scott Logan plays the ball to Grimaldi. He now is Jason Smith taking out the Bradford uh, defence. Getting over the halfway line. It's on the last tackle. Good defence on show here then from the Bradford Bulls. And Tony Smith to hoist the crossfield bomb. It's a chase here for Dion Bird, he's after it. Withers gets away from it. Vicona's on his outside. He's tucked inside on his own. Vicona wanted it. And the record then was begging for Vicona. He's got the ball now. He should have gone to Forshaw. Withers made the break. The cover defence was coming across. Vicona decided to stay outside. There was plenty of room to move. He really should have offloaded there the fullback. That's a try gone begging for mine. Well, Bradford still aren't done. This is Deacon. He gets it away to Van Gennar. He offloads to Deacon again. And an interception attempt there by Chris Smith. He missed it. It was a wildness kick. It's a knock-on. Mackay was. Is it a knock-on by Graham Mackay? Brian Noble watching on anxiously. Well, he I think took his a reaction hit. tells its own story. He took a huge gamble. Did Chris Smith Richard Richard went for the intercept and started later on to try to hoof it. This is a break from Withers and he really should have looked outside there. And you can see by Kona absolutely disgusted. There was no one at all. Sean McRae knows that that is a huge let off. And he knows his men have made a good fist of the opening eight minutes here. Long, long way to go yet, but it remains at nil-nil. And Grimaldi is in possession. He gives it now to Luke Felsch. Felsch tries to make progress, but Brian McDermott is there, and so too was Jamie Peacock. This is Steve Craven now for Hull. Craven, a new two-year deal to stay with Hull, one of the big improvers of Super League 6. Tony Smith in the England squad for the Welsh International later this month. Grimaldi to Jason Smith. Logan, back to Smith. Here's Dion Burr. Plenty of movement, but very flat running from the whole side. Jason Smith hoists the bomb, turns with us around, but uh, that's far too deep. They're going to have to get their uh, their eyes set and their sights set for the kicking game tonight. Well, he thought that Michael Withers was just out of position, tried to uh, scoot it away on the outside of his boot. Not the best kick, far too strong. And they're very short in the in-goal areas here. Penalty. Messing around, Brian McDermott trying to get to his feet. And Felsch and Craven and Grimaldi just wouldn't let him up. Again, I must uh, praise the very whistleblowers for the past three or four weeks. They really have clamped down on what has been a block on our game for quite some time. Now we're getting more open play than we've ever seen before because the referees are policing this play of the ball. Here is Deacon. They're in the red zone, Bradford, with McDermott to within 10 metres of the whole line. And a stack of tackles left in the bag. Watch for the switch. Henry Paul on the run. He's asking someone to come to him by Kona. Oh, it was flicked, I think, there by Parker. I think it was flicked at by Parker. But Brian Noble doesn't look terribly impressed with the start his team has made. Why should he? Henry Paul is throwing it to nobody. No chance for Vicona. It wasn't touched by Parker. It is head and feet to Hull. Hull. Yes. Well, it's all panic stuff. Here goes Dion Bird. Clear! The try in the eight all against Bradford at the Boulevard last year. To Dion Bird and Brian McDermott too quick out of the blocks. Head to head. This is the way it looks. The last home defeat, though, for the Bradford Bulls. 26-28 against Leeds on the 30th of July last year. Almost 12 months since they have tasted defeat on home soil. And Hull with an awful record here. 
in the city of Bradford. Not necessarily here, because of course this is the first time they've met at Valley Parade. Previously they were at Odson. Well, Sean McRae will be very pleased with this opening. Two great opportunities bombed by Bradford. Silly play, just keeping the ball alive. A uh, little bit too expansive football at the moment. Jason Smith took that in brilliantly. Here now is Logan. And a good tackle by uh, Scott Naylor. Two big men, one in the forwards, one in the centres. And Naylor could easily be a forward. The size of him, Grimaldi. Again, we see the whole attack extremely flat. Grimaldi had to reach back for that. Grimaldi hunted down by James Lowe. That's a good move from Tony Smith. He's found Luke Fels. Luke Fels dumps it back to Grimaldi again. And they keep this movement going. Craven, and again they offload. And here is Adam Marr. The ball on match, though, with someone coming on to Burst. Really get some momentum going. Jason Smith, always danger when he's got ball in hand. Flicks it out. And Graham Mackay drops on it. And the whole crowd were appealing for a knock-on, but Ian Smith said that the ball went backwards. Great sleight of hand there, and a good step from Jason Smith. Went backwards, nothing wrong with that. But there really should have been someone supporting the loose ball with Jason Smith. Opportunity gone. First chance for Hull. Big Joe Vanganar now. He isn't chosen in the New Zealand side to face Australia next week. But the Paul brothers are, and Bradford must cope next weekend without them. There is Henry Paul. Here now is Mike Forshaw. Boy, did they miss Mike Forshaw at Wigan last week. Last tackle. Deacon dabs the ball over the top and towards the corner. But uh, that too will run uh, too deep. Disappointing kick in the end. That was the major reason I feel that he was introduced into this game. It's an extra dimension to this uh, Bulls outfit. No offence to Robbie Paul and Henry Paul, but uh, the open play kicking really is uh, not as good as what it should be, especially over the last few weeks. Jason Smith, good ball back inside to Tony Smith. Tony Smith can't get around Michael Withers though. Terrific flying tackle from the Bradford Bulls fullback. Looks like Smith has taken one just as he offloaded. He's that's, down on the ground, I think. That's Jason Smith, he's back in back play as Grimaldi waits for Craven to play the ball to him. Now it's with Richard Hall. And here is Matt Crowther again. Crowther saw a gap that was there briefly between Mackay and Deacon. And it was swiftly closed up. Adam Marr is the dummy half this time. Richard Horn will float the kick out wide. Too strong. Yes, far too deep. Well, it was a beautiful pass from the loose forward, Jason Smith. He commits his body on the inside. Henry Paul, shoulder charge, nothing wrong with it. Paul had already committed himself to the tackle, but he caught it fair and square on the chest. Well, that's two little pieces of magic that we've seen from the Australian and loose forward Smith. They've got to keep a good eye on him. Henry Paul with the ball. That's a penalty. Henry Paul. He could have actually been penalised himself because the rule states he's actually got to get to his feet. Before he plonks the ball down, yeah. So he could have been penalised, but as it is, the referees give him benefit of the doubt. Well, it's pretty difficult when uh, Steve Craven was having a piggyback. Robbie Paul waits for the call from his coach, Brian Noble. There's brother Henry, they'll be on the, uh, the plane to Australia. And Salford are ahead, six points to nil after 10 minutes at Headingley and Leeds at the moment are having a real fright from various clubs Salt for the latest good tackle from Richard Horn there went really low on Graham Mackay has to, he's such a big man good ball there defence a little flat-footed and Deakin was the man in support and he just shimmed his way over the line but a highly promising start by Hull but it's the Bradford Bulls who get first blood. Good build up to this, they pushed it right into the corner then they did the simple run around by corner, superb delayed pass, good support play, this was well worked, simple run around with the hooker lows and bang straight in under the sticks this should be a formality Two wasted opportunities earlier on, but not now. Paul Deacon with the try and uh, an important kick coming up for Henry Paul, not just in the context of this match, but if he kicks this, he will be the first to reach 
100 goals for the season, that includes drop goals. And 100 goals it is, 97 with place kicks, 3 drop goals, 100 goals for Henry Paul, 6-0 for the Bradford Bulls. You can see how the man is sucked in, and as soon as he's sucked, there's a big gap, half-hearted tackle on Vicona. And Vangana, should I say, and Deacon in. But that really was well worked. Low as he was and took it to the blind side, addressed the defence, and Hole accommodated them, shifted over, and as soon as they got the link and the run around, there it was. So Hull restart, Brian McDermott traps it on the knees, moves forward a few metres, picks it up, and then collects the tackle. Adam Marr was in there very quickly to prevent any forward motion and Campbell working hard around to play the ball as well Tony Smith having another little dab at uh, Nathan McAvoy here goes Paul Deacon tackled by Felsch and knock on by Deacon lost control of it nice little step to go underneath it he just lost it well, Deacon, who got on after about 56 minutes last week at Wigan, he's in the England squad for that match with Wales, as I say. He was a two-try star of the Lancashire side when they won the Origin game against Yorkshire recently. Richard Horn, he missed out on that uh, Origin game because of injury. But I'm sure he is in David Waite's thoughts as well with the uh, internationals due later this year. Big night for Richard Horn as well. Got a lot to prove against one of the best in the world, Henry Paul. Good showing tonight. Will help his cause in internationals. That was a good tackle by Deacon on Scott Logan. This is Jason Smith. And here is Steve Craven. Drives it in at Brian McDermott. And the ball has come free. Joe Vanganar has it. Vanganar has bounced away from two. Could have been the fourth prop of the season. Today you see Craven losing possession. Vanganar is playing out of his skin. Amazing, really, that Gary Freeman has that Brian Noble is not too unhappy about that either. He knows the two Paul brothers who are uh, dead set. We did rather have the big fella, Vanganar, here. Yes, and rightly so. He really is at the top of his form. Because it's Castleman here next week. This is Mackay. Oh, Crowder just didn't have the strength to stop him. Well, they think they build them big and tough and fast and strong at Bradford. And Graham Mackay fits the bill and he just ran straight over the top of Matt Crowther and Sean McRae knows that his defence has got it all on to keep these big men out well they say they wanted to do their homework and they're working that blind side excellently beautiful play here in the end it was a lovely ball from Henry Ball that set the big fella going came on to the run you see how Richard Hall was just sucked in just a second and if you don't get a good hit on this fella, this is what happens. Crowder, no match for the big man, Mackay. Well, they love them big and tough, but skillful here as well. And Graham Mackay, who of course uh, this time last year was playing for the Leeds Rhinos, is now uh, applying his trade for the Bradford Bulls. And uh, they talk about big and strong and tough and skillful. Leslie Vinacolo, the Volcano will be here for Bradford next year. What a talent he is. And what a talent this fellow is. Henry Paul, well if he does go next year, and it's still not 100% apparently, what a loss he'll be. Paul takes it on the blind side. Look how Richard Horn just hesitates. It's enough. Once the offload, bang! Can't get a half hour of tackling on this fella. As this fullback will tell you, Matt Crowther. He enjoyed that. Mountain of a man playing in the centres. That is power. And Sean McRae will know all about Graham Mackay because uh, Graham Mackay was in the World Cup squad for Scotland last year that uh, Sean McRae was coaching. 12 0. It was a shaky start for Bradford, but they seem to have settled down and maybe now they will start to cut loose. 12 0. 20 minutes gone, midpoint of the. Uh, first half 
Phil Clark, do you think this is now the moment when Bradford will up the game? It was a nervous start, wasn't it, for both sides. It seemed as though they were desperate to score the first try, forcing the pass and not really waiting for the opportunity to arise, but Bradford now starting to take control. The difficult thing, I think, for Hull is that really, from what I've seen of them this season, they can only score tries close to the opponent's line. And it does take them a while to build up to that sort of field position. Until they get the kick again, right, that'll make that impossible. And really, they're on the back foot at the moment. Those with the dab and uh, Parker is watching this, it goes touch and goal, he took the opportunity to allow it to run touch and goal, but I'll tell you something, Naylor was steaming up and so too was James Lowe's, the kicker. Now then, Bird, this is someone who can attack from long range, but not on this occasion. Well, they caught the Bradford defence on this side, a little bit of a nap then. Tap on the 20 and uh, they took full advantage. Broadbent does well, offloads to Grimaldi. He finds Tony Smith. Good tackle, Lee Gilmore. Hey, hey, Interesting hey, to see how Lee Gilmore handles the forward play. He has played there a lot, especially when he was at Wigan. Oh, that's a bad mistake from Vaughan. I'm just about to say that uh, he doesn't like playing in the forwards. It makes it quite clear, Lee Gilmore, that he'd rather be out on the centres. I think also uh, Brian Noble has told us that's where he believes he is at his best. Well, this was a real mess up there. There was no Jesus. chance for uh, Logan Campbell to get that. Not the best pass from the youngster Richard Horn. He hasn't scored for four matches, Richard Horn. But a try against the Bulls at Odsall in 1999. And you, they lost 42-14. Uh, to be fair, he's learning every game. The try that he created last week for Maiden was something out of the top draw. We saw that uh, Sullivan was out of position and took full advantage with a magnificent kick. And Maiden finished it off in great style. Oh, dropping off the tackles a bit, alarmingly maybe, for Sean McRae's liking. They've made the fewer handling errors though. They're doing the neat switch of Bradford, close to the play the ball area. They've done it four or five times already and it's creating havoc in this defence. So is Deacon. Beautiful step there off the left. Grimaldi followed him. He's appealing for a knock on then, it wasn't forthcoming. Henry Paul dabs it. Off Jason Smith. All over the show. The crowder is there, fortunately for Hull to tidy up. And someone got a kick in the face then. I think it's Dion Bird. It is. Well, the pressure has been relieved because Bradford were not standing square at the play of the ball. There's a beautiful way to kick though from Henry Paul a way to apply the pressure and these are the little things that Bradford have to really polish up on because it's things like that that can just change the complexity of the the game especially when they're playing the big guns and when the real pressure's on like we saw last week they've got to start polishing up on the not just the basics but these pressure kicks well Hull would say I think Steve that uh, this season they are one of the big guns they're third in the table at the moment this is a pressure game for all concerned as it is at Headingley, 6-all, Leeds and Salford, Logan, good play, Dion Bird, even better, this is Parker, and the scrambling Bradford defence, Withers and Gilmore comes across to cut him down, Great Broadbent. support there from Holt, that will lift their spirits, Smith back to Broadbent, here's Scott Logan, Vicona, good tackle, 3-on-1, Vicona took the gamble, it came off, Broadbent again, attacking the line, then giving it to Jason Smith, here's Matt Crowther, and he's running around in a circle, Stabbed it to the end goal, that's a poor kick and it's easily swept up by Nathan McAvoy. Great position there by McAvoy. Anticipated the kick, was established well and truly in the end goal area. Wonderful to see them read the game like that. Brian Noble would have been most impressed. Just four defeats under Brian Noble in 22 matches. But they have lost two big ones recently against St Helens and Wigan. And of course they lost the grip on the Challenge Cup as well this year. Graham Mackay. Lowe's. Fielden. The change has been made. If you set your watches though for a 20 minute switch, they were five minutes late this week. Fielden and Anderson have come on. The props have been rotated. A test of a park of this. That'll be a penalty messing around. And Jason Dion, Smith. Dion Bird and uh, Jason Smith. He was maybe lucky there that he 
Oh, and Hull are now really lucky because Mike Borshaw's dropped that and they've got it back. By Luke Felsch. Was, and there's, the a, there's a penalty now. That played the ball. I was about to make the point, Steve, oh, that Jason Smith was lucky that he wasn't uh, dealt with more severely by the referee. His only intention was to stop this play the ball being taken, this penalty being taken quickly. Well, they're trying to just slow things down, aren't they? And you can see there that uh, could have been a Bradford player in the sin bin as well for a professional foul. But James Lowes, he wasn't going off at the referee. He was going off at his own player saying, come on, that was a first tackle. And it was giving them possession. Richard Hall copped a fairly high one then. No penalty though. Tony Smith, Jason Smith, Scott Logan, back to Jason Smith, wrapped up by Lowe's. Well, the skills of Jason Smith are well documented. He can create havoc, but they really have got to start running a little bit late. They're coming a bit too flat off him. Yes, they're very flat at the moment, the Hull attack. And Tony Smith. What a hit from Forshaw. That was a real ball and all tackle. Bang. Smith knew it too. Uh, referee uh, Ian Smith in the front of the picture. Tony Smith, the player there. He took his eye off the ball. The referee said there was no advantage to Bradford. They picked it up 10 metres nearer their own line. Well, he doesn't look too impressed, Sean McRae. Neither does Paul Deakin, he's a bit groggy. Got a big hit there from uh, Luke Felsch. This is with us. Important now that Hull get their defensive qualities sorted out. They can't afford to let the balls get on the roll. Vicona does brilliantly to Henry Paul. On to Deakin. Here goes Forshaw at the middle. What a difference he makes in the forward. Oh, Forshaw has knocked the ball off. They never play, he never got up onto his feet either. Well, they're trying to play this ball as quickly as possible. Well, that could have gone either way. Well, it's a reflection. I think Forshaw perhaps badly done to. But that's uh, a risk that you take when you're trying to play the ball ever so quickly. Richard Horn trying to get some momentum going for Hull, but being pushed back. You know, Henry really, Paul and with us. That really lifts the side. And it also lifts the crowd, and when Peacock comes in and does a smashing grab like that, the fans love it. Jason Smith, he's been involved in some titanic struggles in his time. Horshaw is penalised now. Well, there's been a lot of whistle from the referee here for infringements around the play of the ball and I think he might have to start uh, taking firmer action to clean it up but he's got to realise it's not a matchbox in his back pocket the two cards, get on with it strike a line, show it Broadbent was on a run but this is Grimaldi Adam Maher is the dummy half there, 20 metres away Hull with Luke Fels. It's one out though, he's on his own. Well they're setting up obviously for a twist or a switch of play. Grimaldi to Tony Smith. He just tried to drop the shoulder but he didn't fool Paul Deacon. Broadbent, will he fancy his own chances? Flicks the ball away, Grimaldi will carry it on. Smith is streaming for it down wide. He's going to get it. There it is, a looping pass to Jason Smith, a dab through, but straight into the arms of Vicona. Oh, oh, just like Shelley Pease. Good position yet again, crowd don't like it, but uh, he's been interfered with. Mostly with the way that Ian Smith, the official, has been blowing merrily. Peacock, driving it in hard. Wonderful tension here. Great atmosphere. Anderson. Two drives, this will be the twist and maybe the shift out wide, it is. With Deacon, and then on the run angle was Fielden. No support, second phase was slow. Last tackle, Grimaldi doing his best to try and stop the momentum. The little kick through was by Deacon, it's well claimed by Chris Smith, and then he's hit by McAvoy and also by Mackay. Again we saw a wonderful pressure kick there. Just bobbles in and around the ground when you drop onto it. Usually two or three chases onto him. 
Good tactical play there from Deacon. 12-0 to the Bradford Bulls, but it's all in possession with Paul Broadbent. Now Grimaldi. He gets it away to Logan, and he's met with a fierce challenge from Paul Anderson. Well, you get the impression that his whole side are just going through the motions. They're playing basic football. Lovely on sale. Dion Bird from Tony Smith. It's on the last. He releases it. Grimaldi following up, picks up, and then the ball goes free and Peacock drops on it for Bradford. Well, well that was inventive it. play. Was it ever? It was a beautiful little chip over the top. If that had been a try, I'm sure that Ian Smith, the official, would have gone to the video screen to see if he was on side. That's high. Gilmore would have felt that. Grimaldi, the culprit. Just be careful. Play on. I'm just about to say that, uh, that Hull seemed to be wanting to play just basic football and then it's only when they get about 10-15 metres from the line that they try to see something different. They need to be a little bit more adventurous deep within their own half. Leeds seem to be at the pace of it after half an hour now, 16-6 over Salford City Reds at Headingley. Vital match for Leeds in the top five and Salford's ambitions also on the line a bit tonight. Anderson. for defence from Crowther and Campbell. Can they keep them out? Field up. Forward pass. Oh. Forward pass. Well, he blown before him. That's contentious. No, it was forward. He blown before Field and actually got the football. How's he got that forward? How on earth has he got that forward? Because he's a man with a whistle, that's why. Well, I know. But I'm only posing the question. Yep, it looked okay from here. But you can see there, the referee is... Uh, he blown up before Phelan virtually got that football. But for once, Eddie, you're right. There's the offload. That's fine. That is as straight as a die. Well, I'll tell you one person who won't be complaining. Sean McRae. 12-0. Well, it just shows you the difference between the two sides so far after 32 minutes is the fact that uh, Bradford are running onto the football and that's how we're making so much ground whereas Hull, they're just plodding in a very, very flat line at all. And there's the breaks, 10 for Bradford already, just three for Hull. Well, that's why Sean McRae will be quite happy. He could go into the half-time, only 12 points down, but it could have well, well been 25 to 30, he knows it too. They're near the halfway line as Grimaldi flicks the ball to Tony Smith and that is Richard Horn. he gets it away but a terrific tackling from Mackay. But it's easy Eddie if you do it so flat, Mackay had to take one step to do the tackle. Tony Smith, he was under pressure from James Lowe's, got the kick away, here's Vicona now, opportunity for Vicona, he's given it to Withers, he in turn has given it wide to McAvoy, the whole record last year they finished seventh but a top three finish this year is well and truly within their reach and as I said earlier on the crowds flocking back to the boulevard and coming out on tour with them as well when they're playing away from home as the black and white jerseys behind the post here tonight will testify to be fair they're one of the uh, the best away supporters in the league Bradford, Bradford have the, the crowd at the moment Gilmore but Hull aren't far behind them Robbie is preparing to come on. Here is Deacon. Deacon stabs it through. Well waited. And Parker taking no chances. Deacon Another just minute. got a... You're on the ball. Every I just wonder for a moment whether that was a mistake by Deacon and he just flashed at the ball with his foot and did well in the end. Well, he could see that he was going to be tackled and smashed. So he took the option, a little look, said, oh, oh, they're coming for me. Yeah, I think he meant it. Sure he did. It's proven a good ploy by Brian Noble, the Bradford coach. Be interesting to see who he removes to bring Robbie Paul on. No sign as yet, and Robbie Paul actually is now making his way back to the bench. And sitting down. Well, it would surprise me if uh, if Brian Noble brings off Paul Deacon. First goal line drop out of the match, and Fielding gets it and crosses halfway and drives the ball in. That's a, great, with it. that's a great advantage of the Bulls 
so much strength coming off the bench. For sure. And Hull trying desperately to slow this Bradford momentum down. And being allowed to at the moment by the ref. Gilmore, Mackay. Another switch to the blind. The likes for the link. Will it come? It's with Henry Paul. Anderson's the charger. He found Deacon instead. Here is Peacock. Peacock offloads to Henry once again. Oh, Henry went without it. Oh, that's a contentious uh, call by the referee. A little bit too smart then. But I think that was all right. Let's see where the ball goes. Oh, he knocked uh, it forward yep. initially. Well done, the referee. And too much fancy work. Four minutes to half time. It's all right for knitting and darning and sewing. But then you can in a big ball line. Well, if, even if it bounces off the knee, it doesn't nullify the knock on. Too true. Chris Smith. I'm impressed, Eddie. I've agreed with you for. Uh, 36 minutes and 22 half? seconds. Yeah. I don't think we've ever gone through a half yet, have we? No. There's time. Pest jumps to the ground by Gilmore Richard Horn to Tony Smith well a nothing kick really and Broadbent waving his players forward to chase this down by Kona inside it goes to Withers well that was just poor play as Eddie has just mentioned a nothing kick now by Kona again crowd waits for by Kona to score this record equaling ninth try in successive matches There's Vicona again. Deacon. Fielden. Interesting to see how they're utilising Fielden really way out outside the centres. Lowe's. Anderson. Again, we see how they're running onto the football. That means virtually when they get possession, they're over that advantage line already. Deacon, drop goal attempt on the last. He's got it. He hasn't. The crowd reaction behind the post fooled me but it didn't fool referee Ian Smith and he just hooked it fooled our cameraman as well not a bad option though you know, I like the one point it can be so so much of an advantage but that's good defence that's a knock on that's a big mistake he's come up with a mistake very early Jason Smith but he was hunted down by three Bradford defenders then well, if you go in with a big smash like that, you're more than likely to come up with a mistake. Bang! It's hard to hold onto the football when there's so much impact. He's claiming it was pinched by Peacock. Henry Paul with us. No. That, that type of situation, anyway, you could see they were going in for the tackle and the ball comes clear. Maybe we should look at the fact that... Just say maybe we should look at the fact of uh, taking notice yet again of an Australian rule. Well, now we will disagree. I watch that state of how how do you expect a referee to not only make up his mind about one-on-one -on -one steals? Now you're asking to make up his mind whether it's a, a knock-on or an intentional knock-on. Well, he's, he's already done that. It's as though he must have been watching too. Uh, I think you're in very rocky territory there. Noble is making his way down to the touchline. I mean, to me, if the ball comes off a defender's hand and is not, the ball goes forward, whether it's intentional or not, Henry oh, Paul, Paul has hit the deck. Fielder, he was headies. And that really is headache time. Well, for me, anyway, going back to that, that is a knock-on. We've seen it twice in the State of Origin series this year. Go, nice! take any notice of me but it was for sure going to the in goal area oh nail is hurt now no he isn't he's just kidding everybody just making sure that everybody got back on side five seconds to half time it's going to be 12 all there's something spectacular happens here there's the siren and Sean McRae makes his way to the 
the dressing rooms as well. Well, Deakin had a pot shot with a drop goal attempt. He also, of course, got Bradford rolling in the first try. It was goal by Henry Ball, and uh, Graham Mackay got the second. They were 12 up in 18 minutes. And Hull, well, they have stuck to their guns gamely. Though they have no reward to show for their efforts, but at least they have restricted Bradford to just two tries and two goals in that first half. It's only 12 nil, and that, I suppose, will be looked on with all the pressure they've had to withstand as something of a moral victory for Sean McRae's men. Bradford Bulls 12, Hull nil. Half time here in the Tetley Super League. The league leaders on their way to a four point lead at the top of the table tonight. Stats and uh, Hull working hard, a little harder in the tackling, but they are missing far too many tackles for Sean McRae's liking. They've been in possession 17 times, held on to it 10, 19 times, and 12 for Bradford. Grimaldi and Lowe's, the two hookers working so hard in the tackling department. But not enough breaks for Hull, but plenty of clean breaks for these supporters to cheer. The Bradford Bulls army is at Valley Parade. All ages, having the time of his life. Is he ever? Doesn't know there's a rugby match on, but just loves the ball. He does. Robbie does. When will he be thrown into the action? It's going to be interesting uh, on the coach, Brian Noble. Perhaps he uh, should give Paul Deacon at least 20 minutes. And if the game is well and truly in the pocket, then it wouldn't surprise me to uh, if he didn't use him. I think he may only bring him on if uh, there's a bit of a wobble. Oh, the kick. And a good job the broadbent was there because he trapped that on his stomach and ran the ball back. I think he took a, a decision and thought, oh, I might drop this. I think I'll let it just go to the feet. A wise decision, I think, for a prop forward. Substitution. So Bradford looking for early points to close this game out. Hull looking for early points to get back in with a sniff of something. And what a famous victory it would be to take away Bradford's 100% home record. Well on the stats that we just put up there Eddie, James Lowe's he really has been tackling hard and he's doing such a good job on Tony Grimaldi we mentioned, well that's an awful mistake but we mentioned the fact that last week Grimaldi made so many runs from dummy half, was so creative and that was one of the major reasons why they come up with a win against St. Helens but Lowe's has shut him down no chance there really for uh, Paul Parker to get that pass it was behind him and a little wayward but the ball has gone out, so it's a scrum to Bradford, and they're 20 metres away from the Hull line. Testing moments at the start of this second half for the Hull defence again. Well, the big fella, Graham Mackay, is very deep indeed. This is Paul Anderson, this is Henry Paul. through and the gap just opened up for him and Henry Paul went through it like a, a knife and it was a, like a dagger to the heart of Sean McRae I'm sure well he came away and peeled on the blind run around with the big fella Anderson he used him out wide this is superb play you can see how the whole defence anticipated that the big fella Paul Anderson was going to go careering onto the football. And it's uh, unusual to use a prop forward like that in a run around. It certainly worked. Confused the whole defence. His fifth try of this season, Henry Paul. Has already pipped Andy Farrell now to the 100 goal mark this season. 29 goals in his last four matches, by the way. Scored two tonight already. And here he is lining up attempt number three. To add the extras to his own can, uh, try, and that is exactly what he does. It's 80 nil. You can see there they anticipated it. Just hang back to the defence. They thought the big fella was coming through. It was a neat run around, and they just failed to fill in. Sheer skill and speed did it all. 
the Bulls fans are happy. Bully bully, they say. So does he. She is skill in the end. And the kickoff is flicked back by Naylor, and here comes Vicona. And here is Fielded. Well, we we're going to catch up now with the half-time news and see what was said by the coaches as he's got fielding for a knock-on. Let's go down to Bill. Well, Brian Noble will have been delighted up to a point, not by that knock-on there from Stuart Fielden, but with that start to the second half from his side, because he was looking for smarter football from them. Defensively, Bulls outstanding in the first half. Noble delighted with that. He was looking for a bit more incisiveness from them going forward. He's got that already. Hull are looking for that themselves. Sean McRae, likewise, really happy with that first half defensive performance. Other sides have been 30 points down at this stage against the Bulls here this season. So Hull are doing well to hang in there, and they've got to hang in there increasingly and try and create something going forward which they're doing now oh that ball was stripped was it it went backwards anyway referee says play on to Paul Deacon and away well it certainly was not back by field and well, as Eddie has already mentioned it did go in a backward motion and there was only one on one at that particular time Henry Paul Bradford really pulverised this whole defence on the short line side, but they utilise it again. Straight up the middle though is Route 1 for Paul Anderson. We haven't seen much running yet again from James Lowes, who's quite happy just to uh, administer from the dummy half position. Obviously, Brian Noble, the Bradford coach, wants an expansive game. Off the outside of the boot. Looking for Vicona out wide, he punches it back in field. It bounces for Henry Paul, he stabs it along the deck. Touchline. Well, I'm not so sure that Henry Paul just put a little dinky kick in there to try to uh, regather. He did. And uh, White Connor did it exceptionally well. Yeah, there was no doubt in my mind, in his mind, that uh, perhaps there was no one at home. Oh, great work, great defence. So busy, isn't he? Not only in attack, Eddie, he just works overtime in defence. It's uh, This has been a pretty solid start to the second half from uh, the Bulls. Apart from the knock-on, Brian Noble should be quite happy. Chris Smith, he's played the last four. He's named in the Welsh squad for that England international at Wrexham at the end of the month. Here is Broadbent and Hull appealing that the well, Gilmore tackle was too from Gilmore high. was high. Even though he fell off it. Broadbent still would have felt it. Luke Felsch now. Again we see this whole attack very flat. It's as though they can't work any sort of move or magic until they're within 10 or 15 metres from the Bradford line. High hanging kick though from Jason Smith is claimed that the second attempt by Michael Withers. Well, they're saying farewell tonight to Stuart Spruce at the end of this match. They have a big tribute to him planned. Uh, for the final siren and um, what a replacement they found in Michael Withers did well there he knew that if he was dropping the ball he was twisting his body so that if he does lose control it will go behind him and sad, you're right he has set, Bruce, though, isn't it? it certainly is it's, it's always sad when uh, someone goes out because of an injury but I don't think he'll be finished. I think he's accepted the fact he probably won't play in Super League yet again, but it would be a great buy for any uh, NFP uh, club. Oh and, oh, and Chris Smith went to trap that ball that went underneath his boot, and the uh, kick that uh, was hopeful has turned into something. It's a drop out from underneath the sticks coming up here. Mistake from Chris Smith. Well, you force him, don't you? the first half it was Parker that came up with a, a big boo-boo now it's Chris Smith's turn and it's all about the pressure that is, that is one thing that, that Brian Noel will be happy with about is the fact that the kicking game during this game has been so good that they have applied that pressure he is with us again Stuart Spruce's replacement you mentioned Stuart Spruce might not play in Super League again I wonder if he's got ambitions to play with any team that might be 
admitted to the Super League if anyone is at the end of this year. Well, there's an option. Well, he's a witness boy. You're referring to witness, of course. <laughs> oh, I'm going to upset all the Lee supporters here. Anderson's dropped it. But uh, Lee or witness are banging on the door of uh, the Super League clubs this year. Let them both in. There's a contentious call. No point sitting on the fence. If they meet the criteria, let them in. And, and, and leave Huddersfield or whoever finishes bottom in as well. So expand to 14. Yeah, and then just play each other twice. Then we will have a proper competition. A proper balanced competition. Well, maybe a talking point for Rugby League World on Wednesday at 8.30. Sky Sports 2 this week. That's the sort of thing we do on Rugby League World. We uh, hopefully get you talking and uh, get you emailing. And arguing. And uh, Yes, plenty of that. Adam Marr loses it. He's lost it. We'll take the first knock on. We'll take the Marr knock on first. Head ball to uh, Bradford. Oh, it was knocked out, actually. This should have been play on. He's got it right. I thought the referee had made a mistake. And uh, I think the old touch judge down this side gave him a little bit of a nod. The only knock on was by Bradford. Nice right, to see the officials it. combining. So an opportunity here for Hull with Richard Horn. And now with Chris Smith. Bounces away from two. They've had difficulty breaking through this. Great tackle. Dion Bird. Matt Crowther and Luke Felsch. Crowther takes over. But their opportunities and the really are cut down by this Quicksilver Bradford defence Jason Smith can he weave some magic well they need some dummy runners from this whole attack that's Carvel Tony Smith dabs it towards the goal area and picked up by that man again what Michael Withers this is outstanding bobbled it good position from the referee in Smith he saw that he took it well well, again, we see the fact that Hull playing very basic football. It's only when they get 10 or 15 metres away from the Bradford line that they try to do something, well, different. Vicona still waiting for that try. He's got half an hour to join the uh, select band of three. New Love, Sullivan and Paul Sterling. New Love and Sullivan got the nine tries in successive matches for the Saints. Paul Sterling for Leeds. That's the turnover. He tackled. And he lost it, he's right, the referee, spot on. Yep. But it's the last one anyway, so he's not allowed to play the ball. This will be your first. I thought, OK. <laughs> if it's a lat, it's a handover. Yeah, I know, I, th I thought he just lost it. And anyway, he did lose it, didn't he? Who's losing the plot? Noddy and Smith. Oh, what is your right? <laughs> mm. Horn, Jason Smith, Felsch up the middle, Borshaw um, and Anderson. Have you ever refereed? No. Keep it that way. I've got a friend who has. Mm -hmm. Horn, oh, lovely little run from Horn. Tony Smith uh, couldn't get the ball away because of Winners. Smothered him well, didn't he, the full back? He had to as well. That'll lift the confidence. That's the first real break this half. Crowder, Peacock and Henry Paul force him back. Super defence again. Crossfield kick, he saw there were numbers out wide, Adam Mar allowed it to bounce. Oh, and it was like picking candy up the baby. Graham Mackay just stood in front of Logan Campbell and said, I like that. Well, he ran across so well, didn't he? They're trying to keep it alive, it was on the last tackle, so therefore he took the option. Better defence from Hull there. McAvoy to his feet, plays the ball to Vicona. Deacon, wide to Naylor. Naylor up the middle, Naylor, hauled down by Crowder. Such a deceptive runner is the big fella, Scott Naylor there. Just a little step on the right foot, but it won't worked and got him through the gap he's lost it 
well he's been impact of the tackle he's been deemed to have lost the ball a number of times in the tackle tonight as uh, Stuart Fielding and he has there's the same thing the impact two players going into the tackle not going for the football it's up to the ball carrier to ensure it keeps possession that's why I think it's a good rule in Australia you mean. yeah and Ian Smith obviously wants to book a trip to Sydney <laughs> well that was nothing like what I was talking about in the first half but still I know you're on about the one that looks like a deliberate knock-on knock if it was a deliberate knock-on it would be a penalty but it's another question that it's where the ball clicks anyway rugby league world Steve midweek won't be you and me I think it's uh, Chris and Phil who can carry the debate on well, there, there's a relief Tony Smith why to Jason Smith there they go. What a, that's a perfect example of what I've been trying to say about this whole attack they were all in one line no one's moving forward and little wonder they come up with a mistake they were virtually half a meter away from the Bradford defense here's my corner Fielden through the missed time but there was nobody there second phase and David Maiden had to clutch him to the ground Lowe's Paul flinging the ball about now Rigon and again on to Withers and here is Naylor they just managed to hold him up Jason Smith coming across it's clattered into him got a bang on the ear there as Scott Naylor shakes the head I think it was a strainee from uh, Jason Smith by Kona Lowe's I think that's the first time Jimmy Lowe's has played the ball during this game. Here's Vicona. Paul Deacon. He come wide to Henry Paul off the fingertips and Forshaw knocks off. And a three on one. And he was just a little bit too anxious there. Oh dearly me, they took a big gamble. Coming right out of the line. Well, they're going through a little bit of what we saw for about 15 20 minutes in the first half where Bradford showing little respect for Hull wanting to score off every single passage of play rather than just build up leads a 38 6 up against Salford 10 minutes into the second half there highlights Sky Sports News in the morning Set your alarm early. Belch, tackled by Peacock and Fielden. Broadbent. Carvel. Jason Smith. Luke Belch. Again, far too much one out rugby league football. Shot at referee Ian Smith, not happy with the attention there. Decision for the referee here, and it's uh, back to zero in the tackle count. Maiden has it for Hull, plays the ball to Cook. Here is Logan Campbell. Well, this referee Ian Smith wants to be very careful that he doesn't lose control of this match. Quite a few of the players. Uh, Getting some evening up there, uh, up the shots and getting one back what they had in the first half. It's uh, warming up out there. Paul Cook, Campbell, off the fingertips of Maiden but backwards. Nathan McAvoy with the tackle. Chris Smith, he'll scamper. Straight into the arms of Mike Forshaw. Oh, he crunched him as well. Chris Smith went into that tackle and sort of twisted his back in towards Forshaw. Look how he twists here. And you can see the shoulder certainly made impact into Chris Smith's face. He would have felt that. See how he twists. It wasn't a swinging arm from Forshaw. It's as though Smith sort of led with his chin. He's come off second best, I'm afraid. Big cheers in the background because Robbie Paul has emerged and it's... Paul Deacon, who he replaces, 
the captain is back for the last 23 minutes and Paul Deakin makes his way to the sideline well he's done his job well I don't know whether he's too happy about being he's not withdrawn. happy at all and he's every right not to uh, be over impressed Hull on the last tackle here stabbed through from Tony Smith and collected by Fielding not the best kick and Hull now offside standing well, well, square, square they play the ball they're a little bit messy this crowd getting a little bit irritated all squared on the penalty count now on the scoreboard when it counts actually the penalty count is pretty low considering it's been a little untidy at times lows now then by Kona a dummy half Robbie Paul Mike Forshaw well, to, be fair, Eddie, again. to be fair Eddie we need to try here to spark things up and we're going to get one Hugh Robbie Paul about the second or third time he's actually had his hand on the ball and his impact immediate Robbie Paul with the try he's now on 99 for the Bradford Bulls Robbie will play fullback for New Zealand next week against the Aussies. He hasn't played fullback for the Bulls in six years. Impact player off the bench through the dummy. They were never going to stop him. Barely minutes on the field. It's a short little dummy. Logan Campbell went outside. The four points were begging. Boy, oh boy, we needed that. It was becoming somewhat scrappy. And what's the betting he might reach the magic 100 mark before the end of this night? Robbie Paul, his uh, contribution to this match, immediate. And he has given um, the brother Henry the most difficult of his conversions of the night. Far out on the touchline here. Well, three from three, and this is a real test. There's the angle he's got. And he misses with that one. 22-0. I think the zero will please Brian Noble more than the 22, frankly. Well, this is a moment where they can start opening up. And it has been a problem all night for this whole defence. You can see there they allowed him the space. In fact, he, uh, he virtually stopped, and then took a step, and then thought about a dummy. And in the meantime, the whole defence were just uh, standing still, wondering what he was going to do. And, uh, that's an awful thing. Sails out on the full, and Matt Crowder holds his head in his hands. Not his night. And I'm sure that Sean McRae when he went in at half-time, only 12 nil down, he would have thought, well, we might be in with a chance here, score very, very quickly, but I must say that some of the options that they've come up with in attack have been extremely poor, far too much one-out football. We'll be in Wellington next Friday morning at 8.30, live for the New Zealanders against the Aussies. And it's uh, Chris Warren who will be joined by Frank Endicott, the former New Zealand coach, of course, during the... World Cup and the former Wigan coach we have the current Wigan coach Stuart Raper with us here at Valley Parade tonight so New Zealand against Australia live international next Friday morning 8.30 now then your time has arrived to vote for man of the match 09009 10 10 13 15 50 92 35 56 if you're in the Republic of Ireland play on he did well there, Jimmy Lawrence. Brought it back. Well, the referee said play on twice and then gave a knock on. He put it down to play the ball. He put the ball down to play the ball and now the referee's come up with a knock on. He should have put... I think he's the, the first one. Well, he, that's the first one. He drags it in. 
So he's got to take the first one, which is from the whole player. He drags it back, that's all right. And then when he gets up to place the ball to play after all this chamozzle, referee says you've knocked on. Well, the whole player is asked Ian Smith to take advice from the touch judge, which he did. And that's why Hull are in possession. Oh, it's getting very, very dodgy out there. And the mistakes and Look the errors that. and the missed tackles. Says it all, doesn't it? Don't have to be Einstein to work out that he's been no classic. Oh, see, I, told you, I told you it was brewing. And I said, if this referee doesn't keep control, he's allowed him to get out of control. He's looking for seeing what's happening in there, whether there's any feet going in. And there is. This will go on report. There was some feet stamping around. The referee had a pretty good look at that. Jason Smith, Smith and uh, Mr. Fielden didn't quite see eye to eye. Well, it was simmering, you could tell, because there were so many mistakes, so many mistakes, not only from the players, but also the official. <laughs> He's taking offence to Jason Smith, tackling him. That's all he's taking offence to, and then he threw one. Smith threw the first, and then the big fella started to get into it. There's a frustration. And when he gets into the ground, there it is, into the face. Then another one into the mush. I think, I think they're both going in the bin. Jason Smith certainly is. I'm sure that Stuart Fielding will follow him, and he does. And the penalty goes to Bradford. And the whole thing goes on report. The referee has crossed the arms. It's all on report. Well, there's nothing between the two of them. We won't hear anything more about that. I just saw a little bit of uh, tap dancing in amongst the mall. That'll calm things down for a little while, anyway, until the 10 minutes is up. Maybe so. And I can assure you that um, I think Jason Smith and Stuart Fielding will not have simmered down sufficiently. 12 aside, then. Peacock on the charge. Might be a wise move from Brian Noble's point of view, having the game all truly in the bag, to perhaps say. Stewart have a rest. No point in taking the risk of having a red card. Anderson on the charge, went without the ball. From behind him. And said it's a knock off. The mistakes continue to build. Well, we're here at uh, the, uh, the Boulevard Valley Parade tonight. St Helens against Warrington is our Saturday date with you, 6 o'clock on Sky Sports 3. St Helens up against uh, Warrington with a certain Alan Langer back in the side after his exploits in Queensland. And we're back at Nosey Road next Friday for a, a real confrontation that will be bubbling up there. Saints and Leeds next Friday at 7.30, Sky Sports 3. Well, it hasn't been the magnificent game that we anticipated Eddie but the one thing that has shot out throughout this night has been the solid defence and some of the cruel defence that the Bulls have put in tonight Hull no they've been in a pretty tough encounter 40-20 possibilities here and he's got, he's got it. it it was Paul Cook Eddie B coming up to Hull well, they're not happy with it. I don't know why. Everything's fine. Everything's above board. All the right, I'll go at the referee. No doubt about that. It's a magnificent 40-20. His first kick. Will he come up trumps? Will he come up with a try? With a no, got to it. It's play on. Crowder. Now then, Dan Bradford's line at 
Sean McRae and uh, Tony Anderson. Both of their heads in their hands, and there'll be more heads in hands time now because Steve Craven has just dropped the football. Under no pressure. And Not that's... impressed. Is the face of a man who is none too happy. Nothing wrong with the pass. He just took his eyes off the football. Surprisingly, the amount of professional players that do that. And Robbie Paul again. Nathan McAvoy waits at dummy half. The, the handling error count is, is creeping up, I'm afraid. Well, that shows you the uh, lack of respect that Bradford have done in as much that they just want to score off every play. Some panicky play at times. Every ball and uh, oh, that was a swinger from Luke Felsch on Jamie Peacock. Well, now you see the referee Ian Smith has to go into the play the ball so often because there's that much happening there. So that means he can forget about the 10 meters. He's back now. Rigon support from McDermott. Beautiful run there from Rigon. Well supported as well. Here's Robbie Paul again. Looking to conjure something up for Mike Forshaw. Matt Crowder, though. Did well. Ready well. Good position. Made sure he got back into the field of play. And that's showing a lot more respect for this whole defence there. Opting for the kick rather than just forcing the pass, trying to keep it alive. 11 minutes of the match remaining. It's uh, not the greatest we've seen all year, Phil. Phil Clark. No, you've got to feel a little bit sorry for Hull because after conceding 44 points last week, Bradford's improvement in defence in one week is absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure, although they've dropped the ball on many occasions, Brian Noble will take out in the fact that he has an almost impregnable white line. Wherever he is on the field, he's been nowhere through for the whole side. And uh, they've really, really worked so hard as a team and individually in the, the defensive area of the field. Yes, 44 points conceded last week, but uh, 30 scored. And I know that Brian Noble took a lot of heart from that statistic, that although they didn't play brilliantly against Wigan, they still managed 30 points at the JJB Stadium. Tonight he will be pleased as punch with the nil that is up against the whole name at the moment. It's been a terri terrific uh, effort, the defensive qualities. I suppose it's difficult at many times when uh, you know that they've got the game in the bag that they're trying to just force it. At least they are trying to work as a team and not do individual stuff. Well, this crowd wants to be entertained with tries. Lowe's a ricochet off the referee. Oh, it's nearly on again. He's having a hard night, is Ian Smith, the official. No love lost between uh, these sets of players. And then lose the head and feet of the scrum, the Bulls. There it is. Just a little one from Crowder. The referee gets in the way. He hits the referee. A bit harsh there. This is Robbie. Here's Henry. It's the one-two. Second try for Henry Paul. Right behind the sticks. Henry and Robbie, they will be together in the black jerseys of New Zealand at this time next week. Now it's the Bradford Bulls. Lovely combination. That was uh, simple. Brotherly telepathy. Skill. Knew exactly when to offload. Henry knew exactly what angle to come. And it's been the Henry and Robbie show, Steve-O, second half. Certainly Henry has. Paul, Robbie Paul, Henry Paul now with the three tries they've scored. Yeah. And Henry's added the goal and he's got another conversion to take right here, right now. even though it's 26-0 and about to be 28-0 the singing is coming from the whole supporters they're singing Old Faithful their team is 28-0 down and they're still singing for all they're worth one brother just pulls Maiden out of the loose forward position there's the gap get your ticket, ding ding, all aboard 
four points. Simple. And look at the whole fans, they're here for a night out. Oh dear, I don't know whether I don't know whether I'd have took my shirt off, but still. Richard, ten meters. Come on. Takes a lot, doesn't it? Come to a game in pajamas. A couple there in uh, female night shirts. Nighties, I think they call them. He's going to be offside. I don't think so. Certainly not square. Well, I praise the official in the first half that. Uh, Continuing on with the good work in regards to uh, ensuring that there was no messing around to play the ball. And uh, I must say, I have to be critical of him, he's allowed a lot to go in this second half. I know his objective is to try to uh, keep it into an open game, but it has been extremely scrappy. Robbie Paul to Henry again. There's with us. Here's Scott Naylor, Scott Naylor's bust an open at the middle, couldn't get the pass away to Lowe's. Brian McDermott, Joe Vanganar just on again. Mike Forshaw, Brian McDermott. Nobody there, he was looking as well, he twisted well did the big fella. Lowe's again, stabs the ball to the in goal and it's claimed his own try line and well claimed uh, too by Logan Campbell put his body on the line not so sure it wasn't a little knock on there and we'll be happy with the zero oh there's a mistake young Richard Horn here's Robbie Robbie Paul four more that's 100 tries for the Bradford Bulls for Robbie Paul consecutive try scoring matches well, you can Robbie see, on a ton you can see Richard Horn took his eyes off the football spinning and twisting anything you can do brother I can do equally if not better Henry Paul the first Robbie Paul the second Henry Paul the third and Robbie Paul makes it the fourth add the goals it's been quite a family affair it has my apologies for the singing. Henry Paul then. Adds two more. 34 points to nil. It's a four point lead for Bradford at the top of the table. And they always enjoy their Super League action here at Valley Parade. Kids everywhere. That's the future. And uh, kids, young and old. Great stuff. And Robbie Paul, one of the entertainers that they come to see here. Well, maybe right now we'll be looking to keep Robbie Paul uh, on the bench and bring him out to the second half in future. But it was 42-0, uh, wasn't it, when we saw Bradford beat London at Leicester and it was the zero that pleased now then oh I thought for a moment we were going to get the Vicona try but it was the zero that pleased Brian Noble most on that occasion yep it's been outstanding here's Mike Forshaw again good support from Henry My grab ball has come free but Rigon has retained possession for his team well, I'll tell you what, Morgan Campbell was a bit badly done to there. I thought he was impeded trying to get to that football. And we're back to zero on the tackle count. Here's Naylor. And Vicona's there in support. Well, Tavita Vicona has got three and a quarter minutes to claim this ninth try scoring appearance in a row. Well, look, try to keep it down the right hand side. It's over there now. 
Here's Robbie. Big Joe Vergana takes over. Or Van Gennar, as it should be. James Lowe's coming the wrong way for Tavita. Henry Paul. Mackay. Still Mackay. Lost Locked it. it. Had a big game in the centres, Graham Mackay. Got his work in the tackling department too. And that try that he scored in the first half just ran over the top of Matt Crowther. Tonight's man of the match, and on that occasion, six, the Well, Hull have got uh, just over two minutes to get over the whitewash up the other end otherwise it'll be their second oh and they've not gone now this is going to be their second nilling then in Super League only once before 58 nil at Wigan in August 1999 well Sean McRae must be bitterly disappointed I mentioned the fact there is a glimmer of hope at half time only 12 points down they had to score realistically to be back in this game and any chance of winning but their lack of ideas other than the loose forward Jason Smith Michael Withers has just lost it oh it's not a good day at the office for Sean McRae he will be alarmed at the ease in which Michael Withers got over for that try even though it's so late on in the game it is not the performance from a team that looks like it's heading to Old Trafford but Brian Nelville's men just keep on rolling along Nice finish to a fine game. He's done everything that's been asked of him. The fullback Michael Withers. Tiring defence. See Jason Smith just laid a hand on him. No real impact. I suppose in many ways Brian Noble will look at the, the fact that they've run the angles extremely well in attack. Especially in the opening 20-25 minutes. And that has paid the price, it's taken its toll out of this uh, whole side's defence. And you can see it was a very, very tired outfit there that couldn't stop the fullback. Henry Ball, six more goals tonight, 14 points to nil now. Well, a job well done, a satisfied coach on the sideline. 20 seconds away. The only plot is that uh, Baikona hasn't got over for that elusive try. But Robbie Paul's hit the 100 mark, so they have crossed, or rather made one milestone tonight. But uh, Tavita has to begin again next week. Unless he takes it on the fly. He goes a full length, and that is not likely. Lowe's takes the tackle. That's it. There's the sirens all over. the Australians and Henry a personal haul of 20 of the 40 points not a good night for Hull who came here third in the table and three points adrift of Bradford but on this ground Valley Parade the Bradford Bulls are so difficult to stop and that's why these people have seen win, follow win, follow win so far this season. The 100% record intact and how Bradford have won by 40 points to nil.